My name is Trey Head. I'm uh, from Montgomery, Alabama, uh, where I serve as worship director at Morning View Baptist Church. So my name is Keith Gonzalez. I just finished my first year at Covenant Baptist Theological Seminary. My name is uh, Jihad El Karaki from Sovereign Grace Reform Baptist Church in Ontario, California. And I am an MDiv student here at Covenant Baptist Theological Seminary. My name is Denny Scotchko. I'm from Minnesota, uh, south of Minneapolis, and part of a member of Providence Reformed Baptist Church. I am currently uh, at CBTS. I'm a Master of Arts in Theological Studies, the Historical and Systematic Track, and uh, I'm a little over halfway done. I am a Diploma of Theological Studies student because I don't have a bachelor's degree. Something that I think is great about this school is the school motto, which is informed scholarship, pastoral heart. And I have received that in every single class that I've taken here. I've received great scholarship, but also every professor presses into us how a pastor should be going about these things, especially in seminary education and how they iron themselves out in the local body. And so um, I would say that is one of the biggest uh, and greatest benefits I've received here as a student. Where I wouldn't have to move away from my church context, but also could still receive a good, decent education, especially one from a 1689 Reformed Baptist perspective. One of the things that CBTS tells you is to enroll in the Symbolics course. And it is, it is absolutely wonderful. It's taught by the guy who literally wrote the book on it, uh, our president, Dr. Sam Waldron. And so uh, very thankful to have that class. Which is a step-by-step -step process through the 1689 Confession. And for the first time, instead of seeing that as a rule book or some strange document that's going to dictate what I need to do to worship, um, it, it brings to life why these old Reformed particular Baptists um, did what they did, why they took the time to amass this confession, to get it all together, uh, to protect themselves and to protect their church from falling into heresy, from falling into unorthodox teaching. Um, so a great benefit for me has, has been to understand that and have it start to guide the rest of my studies. Pastoral theology with Dr. Fred Malone and uh, one thing that's resonated with me since uh, that class ended was the order of ministry, so to speak. That order being first my relationship with the Lord and then with uh, my wife and my children, Lord willing, here in the future, and then the fourth would be uh, the church. So maintaining that balance and that priority and relationship, I think is quite important. So another class that I really enjoyed um, was the reliability of the New Testament and textual criticism taught by Dr. James White. And um, I think a lot of people, they hear textual criticism and they think oh, that's a really boring topic and stuff like that. But there was beauty in how Dr. White uh, showed us how our sovereign God has protected his word throughout history. Uh, even so much so when we do textual criticism, we can see how, how good God has been to give us His infallible and inerrant Word and has kept it for us throughout the ages. Biblical Theology 1. And as I was going through the course, like a lot of the stuff that I've heard in the church over the years started to connect dots. You know, here's Adam, here's Christ, you know, there's a tree of life here in the garden, here's the tree of life in, in the new heavens and new earth. And is the tap the tapestry, the matrix of all of scripture became so wonderful, so beautiful that it made me realize, wow, like I've read the I've read the scriptures a bunch of times in my lifetime, and yet there's so much more to dig up. And it is through that experience of mine has been then taking other courses, whether it's in the doctrine of the church or in the hermeneutics or preaching, or whatever else, that I see how wonderful all these things are and just the glory of God revealed in it and it just makes me want to share it with the people in the church and to those who do not, not know God. That um, also uh, affordability. Reality is, is that not everyone can simply you know, leave their workplace, leave their church, leave everything behind. And if you're married, that makes it like, there's even more costs involved and to move to another place. Um, Part of my reasoning to want to pursue a seminary education is that I wasn't born again until I was 30 years old. So, you know, by that time I'm married, I have children, I have a full-time job, 
and in my searching for seminaries, this definitely fit what I wanted to do. I'm so thankful that as somebody who is a husband and a father and who has bills to pay, um, can have a wonderful education without having to worry about pulling out buckets of, of, of student loans. Um, I, I had quite a few student loans coming out of my undergrad and um, when God called me into the ministry and I started thinking about seminary education, that was one of my big worries was, am I going to have to get tens of thousands of dollars into debt again? And this time, it's, I'm not going to be by myself on this. I'm going to have like two more people in my life. So my wife and my daughter who, who are going to have to endure this with me. But uh, thanks to CBTS, like, I don't have to worry about that. It's extremely affordable. Um, and a lot of people you know, think with online education that, you know, the, the professors and everybody, they're, it's not accessible. They're, they're, they're going to be impossible to reach. I'm only going to, I'm only going to see them on my graduation day. And that's just not true. Um, anytime I've ever needed anything at all, I've been able to call up here and have uh, all the administrators and even Dr. Waldron, our president, have, um, have made it so easy for me to reach out and to get whatever I need in order to uh, make my experience here even better.